On May 12, a news broke out in the technology circle, OPPO announced the termination of the Zeku business, not to make chips, the news immediately shocked the whole network. This decision is very abrupt, because in April, the media rumored that Sun Chinkuan, the former head of the AI direction of the overseas team of the domestic GPU unicorn Wallen Technology, will join Oppo Zeku as the minister of the NPU chip center. It's been so many days since then, but the fervor of the story has not diminished at all, at least in mainland China, with all kinds of voices buzzing on the internet. I've taken a general look at the points of contention on the internet which are also relatively polarized. Some people sing ZDKU's praises, saying that OPPO is capable of making chips, but it's just a bad time, while some professional upkeepers stand from a critical point of view, rejecting OPPO's core making strategy, saying that this was a wrong decision from the beginning. So is that really the case? How do we look at OPPO's failure to build a core? How difficult is it for cell phone manufacturers to build a core? And what warnings and inspirations can OPPO bring to us by terminating the core making process? Today we will talk about this topic. Okay, let's start now, first of all, we have to really understand the cell phone manufacturer OPPO's core road, how to go step by step to today. OPPO has always had a plan to develop its own chips. As early as 2014, OPPO set up a wholly owned subsidiary called UGA, mainly responsible for mobile communications, internet value-added services intelligent terminal equipment and intelligent hardware, an OPPO cell phone product line independent of each other. At the same time, in terms of research and development, UGA has always had a layout, including self-research cell phone chip. This is related to OPPO's development strategy. In the early days, OPPO wanted to be a technology company, not just a cell phone company, and after the establishment of UGA, OPPO even took self-research chip as an important strategic direction. No one knows how much money OPPO spent on the chip. Remember OPPO when announced to enter the field of building core, once issued a bold statement to invest 50 billion. From the official announcement of self-research chip in 2019 to today, OPPO's road to build a core has been four years. The determination to independent innovation in the field of chips has been rock solid. In 2019. At the OPPO Future Technology Conference, founder Chen Mingyong said, OPPO will hold the belief of sharpening a sword for 10 years, boldly stepping into the deep water of R&D innovation, to build the most core underlying hardware technology. In 2020, OPPO had ambitiously put forward three major plans, namely the Mariana Plan for Chips, the Pantanal Plan for Cross-End Systems and the Amazon Plan for Cloud Services. Among them, the core is undoubtedly the most important and difficult plan, and OPPO invested heavily to set up Jaku technology for this purpose. In December 2021, OPPO's first self research chip Mariana X launch, Chen Mingyong said, Technology companies without the underlying core technology is no future. Oppo will insist on continuous investment, down to earth, do self research chip. The right road, it is not afraid of far, not afraid of difficult, until the end of 2022. Chen Mingyong also said in an internal speech, the chip thing is something we hold the purpose to do, and it must be done well. We have never hoped for a miracle, and precisely because good chips are hard to make, we need to move forward in a gradual and solid manner, how encouraging these words were then, and how painful they are now. Because the investment is too big, but the harvest is few. 2018, OPPO's R and D costs less than 4 billion yuan, after 2019 jumped to 10 billion yuan. 2020 so far are 10 billion scale. Such a huge investment did not bring the expected return. OPPO self research chip is aimed at imitating Huawei Route 2, challenge the high end cell phone market. Of course, OPPO's strength is certainly not enough to develop the main chip of the phone, its main focus is the image chip. Oppo Kuge efforts for four years the most important result is the Mariana X image chip, applied in its flagship models. However, this one-chip product did not bring the phone to the consumer amazing experience and value enhancement. As a cell phone manufacturer, if the input has no output, then this investment is unsustainable. Technology innovation, not only to build their own, but to create a product to wow consumers. Consumers are willing to pay for this innovation. In fact, OPPO does not have to be frustrated at all. The two big brothers in the same industry, Apple and Huawei's road to the core is not a smooth sailing, first of all, Apple. In 2010 Steve Jobs stood for the last time at the launch to show the world the self-researched A4 chip, which achieved great success. In fact, 
Apple has actually tried to enter the field of integrated circuit technology several times in the more than 30 years after its establishment, but it ended up with repeated failures and the curtain fell. Until it ushered in Jim Keller, Manigolotti, Gerard Williams, and many other great gods with high salaries. With the maturity of the ARM architecture, as well as Apple's tens of billions of dollars without hesitation, there was later A5, A6, to the legendary story of the A16 chip today, Huawei is also the same. Huawei's road to build the core can be described as arduous. Before Huawei really entered the cell phone chip, in fact, has been in the RF, power, communication analog chip and many other aspects have been very deep precipitation. But in 2012, Huawei launched its first cell phone chip K3 V2 can be said to be quite unsuccessful commercially. 40 nanometers and 64-bit memory bus, heat generation, software compatibility is also not. Compared with the Snapdragon S4 and Exynos 4412 of the same period, it was not competitive. It was only after 2014 and 2015 that Kirin 910, 930 and 950 kept iterating, including the introduction of 970 AI module in 2017, that the success of 995G and Kirin 9000 came thereafter. OPPO has just entered into semiconductor R&D for four years. And this result is understandable, not to mention, this also coincides with the global cell phone market recession. In 2022, the global cell phone market had already entered a cold winter. 2022 saw total shipments of less than 1.2 billion units by global cell phone manufacturers, with annual global shipments falling by 12%. In 2022, OPPO sales fell by a whopping 27% year-over-year, well above Apple's 3%, Vivo's 23% and Xiaomi's 19%. 2023 continued this slump. According to a new report published by market research firm Counterpoint Research, the global smartphone market shipped 280.2 million units in the first quarter of 2023, down 14% year-over-year and 7% sequentially. This was the weakest quarter since 2013. According to this calculation, in just one quarter, the global cell phone market shipments decreased by about 45 million units year-on-year. Year. In addition, the aforementioned report notes that in the first quarter of 2023, smartphone sales in China fell 5% year-over-year, the lowest first quarter for sales since 2014. The entire semiconductor industry is in a state of rapid decline. On May 1, the Semiconductor Industry Association, SIA, announced that global semiconductor sales totaled $119.5 billion in the first quarter of 2023, down 8.7% compared to the fourth quarter of 2022, and down 21.3% compared to the first quarter of 2022. OPPO is already a multinational company and is bound to make global macroeconomic studies. In this case, to carry up such a huge investment in research and development, only the more difficult to go, one is not careful you have to drag yourself into the abyss of 10,000 feet. Sunk costs, not costs, from this point of view, OPPO management is still awake, not into the sunk cost trap. Of course, countless Chinese netizens are upset that another Chinese self-made semiconductor chip company has given up on its chip dream. But what most ordinary people don't understand is how difficult it is to research chips on their OWN.IT. Is too difficult to break through the semiconductor, cell phone chips are actually very deeply tied to advanced processes. If there is no process on the plus side, even if mass production is successful, it is difficult to be competitive in the market. And on the other hand, the difficulty of cell phone communication chip integration is quite high, including CPU, GPU, NPU, ISP, DSP and many. Other modules and architectures. It is important to note that we usually say that it is difficult to build a chip. This difficulty does not mean that every module must be at the top, but to use the right technology for the application scenario, select the optimal combination, and optimize at the system architecture level to achieve a balance of performance and power consumption, in order to make different modules and architectures complement each other, and finally improve the performance and power consumption performance of the whole SOC, which is the real difficulty. This is why Kirin 9000 is so successful. It is a process of perennial accumulation, constant iteration, and constant optimization. The division of labor in modern chips has also gradually evolved into four big segments, chip design, chip manufacturing, chip packaging and testing, and system integration. In the field of chip design, because of the need for deep plowing in specific areas, 
the need for long-term patent accumulation and precipitation, the gradual rise of Qualcomm, which started with CDMA chips, Broadcom, which started with highly integrated, low-power chips, including the focus on the GPU ecology of NVIDIA and so on. The chip manufacturing field, on the other hand, has started to shift towards high specialization, complexity, cost control and service orientation. Therefore, some companies only carry out IC design and leave the chip manufacturing to professional foundries, and subsequently TSMC, UMC, SMIC and other foundry companies have come into being. The past model of vertical integration from design and manufacturing to system integration, which was done entirely by one company, is no longer applicable to such a large semiconductor ecosystem. The vertical integration of products is also gradually developing towards the direction of industry chain distribution, division of labor, and even global synergy in different fields and regions. Not to mention a company, it is not possible for any country to produce a chip in its entirety within a country. The chip is the product of a large global division of labor, the result of the cooperation of all the world's best enterprises. What is more difficult is management. For enterprises, it is not spending money to achieve the purpose, nor is it spending money to necessarily have innovative results. Many people are fond of talking about how much money companies spend on R&D, thinking that such companies must have a future. But countless enterprises died in R&D, we only see a few successful enterprises by R&D, which is called survivor bias. When Huawei did, mobile, chip, the entire chip design engineer's labor cost, in fact, is not so high now. And the entire internal management of HiC is extremely tight, and due to the current market, excessive tightness, IC design companies are flooded with poaching, resulting in the current IC design engineer's salary all the way up. And Zeku is a temporary formation of the fusion team, who are very difficult to obey who. The pace of cell phone chip development and very fast, how to effectively form a synergy, may indeed be a real problem. The fact that OPPO stopped making cores tells us that it is very difficult for cell phone manufacturers to make cores, and it needs the opportunity and addition of many factors such as timing, location, and people. Although OPPO gave up the chip business, as long as it holds the smartphone territory, it can first live peacefully and use the phone as a fulcrum to continuously expand more business and keep more possibilities for the future. Moreover, OPPO software and hardware products outside of cell phones are already gradually taking off and opening up. The shutdown of Jaku technology is a major setback on the way forward, but OPPO still has a promising future. So that's it for today's video, and if you have any different opinions, feel free to leave them below the video. We can start more discussion. Friends, we'll see you in the next video.